Welcome to the painting tutorial of canola fields. I'm going to take you through a step-by-step -step process in creating this lovely painting. As you can see, I have a canvas here and it's actually 12 inches by 12 inches and I have the necessary equipment in completing this painting. So what you'll need today is you'll need a palette, paper towel for blotting, some water, also got a lead pencil, a permanent thin marker, a palette knife. If you don't have a palette knife, you can use a butter knife just out of the kitchen drawer. I also have some tape, which we're marking off where we're not going to be painting with the horizon. We've also got three brushes, which I'll be using. The sizing that I've got, is I've got a size 6, a size 15 and a size 20 and we also will be needing a ruler and we're going to be using the fun with some fan, the fan brush and that's going to be for, for the grasses. So what we'll be doing first is I'll be telling you what paint that you'll need for the project and I'll take you through that now. We have yellows. For the canola field, we actually use two types of yellows to give it that punch rather than just plain one color. So we have the lemon yellow, cadmium yellow. I also have the green, which is an olive green. I've got a mid green and I've got a light green. And this is going to give the foliage a bit of depth and a bit of color instead of just plain green and i also we're going to be doing some color mixing i've got the blue and the red and we're going to be making a purple and that's for the mountains so instead of doing gray mountains or green mountains we're going to be doing a nice sort of blue purpley type color and as you can see i've got white black and also white we'll be using these runners here with the palette knife I'll show you how we're going to use that that's why I've done the paint in a line and here I've also added the black and the white and that's what we'll be mixing to make the gray sky so I'll just bring back the painting so you'll know what colors that you'll need and this will explain So here's the painting so here is the two yellows that we'll be using this is the purple that we'll be creating using the blue and the red and this is the white and the black which we're making the gray sky and these are the greens that i've mentioned here these greens the three are incorporated into the bottom here and we're going to be doing the sweet picket fences here with a palette knife or a butter knife if you don't have a palette knife that's fine and we'll be going to be using these colors here which is the burnt umber or brown the black and the white and you'll see here i've actually have the barbed wire making the rustic fence we'll be using the marker pen for that so as long as it's thin that's all that we ask for and you'll be able to create this sweet piece okay let's get started what we're going to do first is we're going to grab a ruler and we're going to measure the canola field so we have more of the canola field than the sky because we want to give the emphasis of the the uh, large field so if you take your ruler and we're going to measure 17 centimetres up from the bottom. Just do a little dot there like that. Then in the middle, make sure it's 17 here and do another little dot there. And also on the edge. And then get your ruler. And whenever we do any sketching, just make sure that you don't press too hard. You don't really need, you don't need to. So you just, just a gentle line, just like that. 
So here you'll see the that's the area we're painting the yellow and the green. And above here is going to be the sky, the mountains and the foliage. So what we're going to do now is you see I've got this tape. It's painter's tape, which is really good because it, it sticks, but it doesn't peel off any of the canvas and it's easy to remove. So just rip off enough length, which will go across the the canvas and we're going to go below the line just like so that'll stop any of the paint that we don't want down here in the canola fields. So what we're going to do first, we're actually going to be painting the sky first and then we're going to move on to the yellow. But before we do that, we're actually going to take our pencil and we're going to draw in some mountains. So really use your imagination and shapes and just create different style of mountains. So this will be your own creative side that will come out. And then just above that, we're going to also do another sort of lines here. And this is going to outline the foliage. So it could be any type of shape. So this here is going to be the sky. This area here is going to be the purple mountains. And this area here is going to be the, the green foliage. And down here is going to be all the canola fields. So let's get into the fun part and let's start painting. First off, I'm going to use the size 15 brush. Uh, it doesn't matter what size brushes you have, as long as you have a brush which is a flat brush. And just dampen your brush that's the only time i use water is to dampen my brush before i paint and to change colors but make sure you um, blot the brush on the paper first before applying any paint because you don't want any watery paint or runs and drips so what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the palette here where i've actually got black and i've got white and we're just going to stir that around and we're going to make a grey. Don't mix it all in at once, so it'll leave it sort of like a marble effect. And now we're going to start painting the grey in the sky. So just really nice loose strokes. And if you find it's a little bit too dark, like I've just done there, just get a bit of the white, which I have on the palette here, and then brush, brush that through. And you sort of want this a bit rough because the sky behind mountains are quite moody. So we want to depict that where possible. Let's flick it through. Just roughly go outside the mountain shape. Don't have to be too fussy with it because when we make the purple, that'll cover and you can define what shape mountains that you'd like. If you have a canvas that is got a, a border like a thickness, mine's actually a flat canvas today. But if it's thick, then what you do is you're welcome to paint flush to the edges or you can paint and wrap the colour around the side of the canvas. So if you'd like to do that, you can and just incorporate the colour by just brushing it like that on the sides. Just so, so if it's on the wall that you'll actually be able to see the colour of the painting rather than just an unfinished look or just a plain white edging it's entirely up to you like you, what you'd like to do with that 
and let's get a bit of white just brush through this sort of just picks a little bit of the cloud movement sort of simple cloud there are other ways to do clouds which I will teach down the track in other tutorial videos so stay tuned but this is a nice introductory there we go so see how I've got that sky I'm just going to wash the brush out and while that dries I'm just going to blot that out so make sure your brush is nice and dry because you don't want any drips especially if you've got your canvas elevated on an easel you don't want any water dripping down your canvas okay so what we're going to do now we're going to move on to the canola fields and this will give time for the sky to dry and then we can go back and start doing the purple and the green so what we're going to do first is we're going to use the light yellow you can use the same brush or if you like you can use the bigger brush which is the size 20 which I might resort to that now so I'm just going to pop that in there so just wet your brush as I said before just blot it now get the yellow and just really just sweep it across see how I've just dabbed my brush into the cadmium yellow that's the darker yellow this just gives the impression of the field without actually drawing in the canola flowers it, it gives you the um, the nice depth and the scope of the canola field so just keep painting that across and if you find it a little bit too dark feel free to use white see how the white's just sort of lightened a little bit so you know you want to have it nice and smooth and blended so put enough on your brush that it'll actually blend it's a nice blending technique this a bit more of this yellow it's nice and relaxing just painting side to side with a bit more down here i'm going to get a bit of white here just to put some moisture in the canvas sometimes the canvases can be dry it depends on the room temperature and also the quality of the canvas if you find your paint sticking just add a bit of white paint and use that as the moisture content or you can use water but very use it very sparingly because as i said before you don't want drips in your canvas so you can bring the yellow all the way down really pretty this uh, painting it's a, a nice little small landscape just to look at and you sort of imagine yourself being there or driving past these fields in the countryside and seeing all the canola coming up Make sure you don't put it on too thick because you want it to dry. You don't want to have to wait too long for to uh, start painting over the top of it. But you want to make sure you don't see any of the canvas underneath. Sometimes you get sort of white bits poking through. And if you find that um, they're still coming through, just use your brush for a little bit of the colour. And if you just do circle motion, that'll fill in any holes or gaps. And then just swoop it across I'm going to put some more of the cadmium yellow the darker yellow just to give some nice loose field you can imagine the little peaks of the canola poking up through nice Remember not don't overwork it, just really leave the 
different colors on the top. There we go, just add a little bit more. Might just a little bit more up here as well. This is where you just make it your own. So you can have it like sort of lighter yellow or darker, it's entirely up to you. But see how here it's a little bit lighter? I'll sort of go to brush a little bit of white through just to give a bit of shadowing and to break up the yellow. You don't need much, just a little bit. All right, so rinse your brush out now. And I'll just leave those on the side there just to absorb the water. Now we're going to get the size 10 of the brush, which is this one here. And we're going to be painting the purple mountains. And as I said, we're going to have fun with some color mixing. And I've created some, uh, I've actually added red and the blue. So we're going to pull a little bit of the red out a little bit of the blue and put it into a separate part of the pan. Mix it around. And that's made like a really dark purple. So what we want to do is we're going to pull in a bit of the white. I'm just going to spin this around. See how just by those Two colours and the white has made a really nice lilac purple. Make sure you mix enough that you'll be able to have enough to paint the mountains. Because you don't want to have to mix another lot and get a totally different colour. So just add a little bit at a time. You can get darker or lighter. I'm just going to pull in a bit more white here. There we go, I think that's right. Okay, so now we're going to be painting the mountains. So just by using the brush, sort of make it sort of scattery. You sort of want either smooth mountains or sort of rocky mountains. Sort of like this, the snow, like the, or even the blue mountains. When you have a look in the horizon, you'll see the nice blue reflection that's quite pretty And you're welcome to brush a little bit of the white through too, if you like, if you want to give some sort of shadowing to the mountain. Perhaps you might want to envisage a little bit of snow on top. This gives a bit of uh, coolness to the, to the mountains. That's it. I'm just going to add a little bit, a little bit of white just here, just to give sort of a reflection, sort of break up a little bit of the the purple. You can actually like sort of dab it with your your paintbrush as well. Sort of gives it a rocky type of effect. Okay, I'm going to rinse your brush out now and blot it on the paper. And what we're going to do now is we're going to peel off that tape that we put there earlier. Just put that to one side.
and just check that that's dry it should be should be pretty dry by now but if not just wait a little bit and I'm going to peel off and have some more tape and I'm just going to put it just on this side here that will just keep the yellow separated from the green stick there so you can use that same size brush which is the number 10 or you can go up to number 15 which is this one here I'm just going to use the number 10 because uh, I just find that easier to control and I'm going to spin my palette around here and I'm going to be using these two greens here that's an olive green and a mid green and I'm going to be using that as the foliage of the uh, the grasses and the, the trees in the background so just grab a bit of the green it's sort of just when you're painting it's always nice just to really relax your wrist and just let the paintbrush do its magic a little bit more green there and I'm going to add a little bit of the mid green here just to give a bit of different sort of color and shadowing The olive green is just beautiful I like this color I use this olive green for most of my foliage especially in plants I'm just going to wet my brush a little bit dab it onto the paper towel just because my brush is getting a little bit dry it's a bit warm in here just brush that through if you want it sort of a little bit iridescent or watery just put a little bit of water on your brush see how I've sort of just stroked it through but make sure you do this if you're only painting on a flat surface because if this is raised up on a easel you'll it'll run the water will run down I just want to show you another little bit of a technique so if you didn't want it too dark you can have it just like this I'm just going to add a bit more of the green in there. I've taught this painting at many classes that I hold. And uh, it's fantastic when they're all lined up. Because they're all very similar, but they're all different. And it just looks like this really long panorama. Just a bit more green here. Perfect. Okay. All right. So rinse your brush out. If you're one of these painters who likes to change their water, you're welcome to go change your water at any time. Okay, now we're going to move on to the foliage and as I said before we've got this fan brush which you can buy in art stores sometimes they're hard to come by but if you haven't got a fan brush with you today uh, feel free to go get a toothbrush that you no longer want to use and, and you can use the toothbrush by having the same sort of effects so what we're going to do with the foliage is we're going to be using these three colors of the greens so we'll start off with that olive green and you just want a little bit on the end of the brush not too much 
just a little bit otherwise when you start stroking it through it'll come out quite blobby so just by using the brush we're going to to brush it upwards so have your the brush pointing horizontally down and having it straight or you can have it flat as well to give all different shapes so this is a nice loose way of making the the grasses so see how that looks very professional doesn't it so just pull it in over this side as well wherever you feel like the grasses you can have the grasses going up a little bit higher you can have it a bit shorter and if you want some sort of grasses down the bottom like flat grasses just turn your brush on its side and then scratch it through this you want it, your brush to be dry we don't want to wet the brush at all during this process you want it sort of really wispy and now you can get the little bit of the mid green and you can just flick through just little bits not everywhere just little bits here and there this just creates the bit of colouring of the greens, just breaks it up from the one colour. I might just add a little bit more up here. Just give it a bit of interest. So see how it's nice flick, just really relax the, the hand and really just go with it. There's no wrong or right way with this part. There we go. And I've got this nice light, sort of brightish green. And I have that colour just to give a little bit of pop. Don't need much. Just a little bit. So it's just like a little speck on the end of your brush. A little tiny speck. And just flick it through like so. I hope you're really enjoying this painting it's it's quite nice you can do this painting over and over and you can get different results okay okay if you like if you don't just want the plain green foliage you're welcome to add flowers to some of the grasses so just imagine some sort of the, the type of flowers that you'd find in the canola fields uh, especially in New South Wales we've got that purple Patterson curse so while we have that purple made up what you can do you can actually dip the brush the end of the brush into the purple which we made oh, which is here just a little bit on the end and then you can just dab in a few of the purple. Not much, just a little. Just breaks it up a little bit and gives it a bit of interest. Or you can do white. But I thought the purple is quite nice because it sort of ties in with the mountains in the background. Just a little bit. You can just have it on one side. We can have it on both both sides I'm just going to put a little bit just here so it's good to use the back of the brush just to get the little dots and you can sort of scratch it in and make it a little bit loose and create little shapes all right so that bit's done so now we're going to wash this brush out make sure you wash these fan brushes out straight away because they get um, quite stiff They're quite a stiff brush anyway with the bristles so you want to remove the any color out of it so you've got a nice fresh brush next time you use it in further paintings okay so now we're going to get into making the picket fences and in these canola fields the one that I'm going to be making is going to be really rustic and we're going to be using the palette knife any size palette knife is fine, but this is like a nice key, key shape. 
and it's about three centimeters long but you can use shorter or longer and if you don't have a palette knife just get a butter knife out of the kitchen drawer and you can have the same effect because we're going to be using the edge of the palette knife in doing the picket fences right so what we're going to do now is you're going to get your palette knife see how i've actually done strips of paint in the palette i've done the brown the black and the white we're going to be using the brown first so just spin your palette round and you're going to be holding the palette knife like so on the angle and you're going to be dipping the palette knife in just on the edge you just want to get a little bit of paint on the edges of your palette knife see how there's only like a tiny little bit there on the edge that's all you want to begin with now we're going to adhere it to the canvas so just imagine a picket fence just falling over don't want these perfect because they're out in the weather so dip it back into the brown again and if you find you get a bit of paint up the back or the front of the palette knife just wipe it on the paper towel and then commence again so we're going to be streaking through just backwards and forwards just a couple of times because we're going to be adding white and black to this Oop, canvas just trying to move dip it in again remember not too much you just want enough to show a little bit of color on the end and i'm going to add another fence post here and i'm also going to have one which is fallen over so just continue getting the fence post shape so dipping it in it's a nice introduction to palette knives if you haven't used it before and just hold it flat on the surface and see how automatically we have these fence posts and it's just tying the whole picture together now isn't it all right now we're going to dip it in you don't need to wipe or you can wipe the, the palette knife if you like on a paper towel and you can have it fresh now dip it into the white and once again just make sure you've only got a little bit of white on there it's pretty hard to see there we go and we're going to be stroking that through a little bit more white there we go and just clear your palette knife off on the paper towel and we're going to be heading into the black and with the black it's quite dominant this color so make sure you only get a little bit on the end not much at all and just on on the edge just like that and just a little bit in the middle as well just create a little bit of body into it You fence posts have seen better days. There we go. So you can go back and you can add a bit more brown if you want a bit more brown in there. But you sort of want to do it in stripes so you can depict that it's actually wood. And you don't want to use a paintbrush for this because it'll be flat and you'll be mixing the colors too much so this is just layering those colors to make the wood impression of the fence post okay so just uh wet that in the water there clean it off on your paper towel all right now we're going to peel off that blue tape there we go look at that you've got a nice clean separation between the mountains and the canola fields
And to give a bit of uh, separation between the canola fields and the mountains and the foliage of the trees and the hills, I'm just going to ask you to get your palette knife out again. And we're going to dip it into the black. And you only want just the tip, a centimetre from the tip dipped into the black. Because we're actually going to make a little bit of sneaky sort of fence posts out here. So just run your palette knife along the edge here. Make sure you, you don't go over into the yellow. There we go. And we're just going to add a little bit of, just a little couple of strokes of the fence posts. So it looks like there's another row of paling fences out in the distance that have also been erected and that's fallen over. And you can put a little bit of white in there as well if you wish. You just want it ever so slightly. Not much at all. And if you do happen to go over in the uh, yellow bit, that's not a problem. It just gives the impression that there's something in the distance without actually having to paint it in. But it gives the viewer something to focus on and sort of wonder what it is out there. And just by looking at it, you can tell what it's going to be. There we go. All right. Now away with the palette knife now. Okay, so that's looking fantastic, isn't it? And it doesn't take that long at all to do. It's quite a nice painting. Now we've got the final piece of the painting to do. And I mentioned before we're using a permanent marker. I've got this pigment liner and it's a size 0.08. You can go smaller. They come in all different sizes and start from... Uh, 0.01 up until I think this is the biggest size is 0.08 and we're actually going to be drawing in the barbed wire because it's nice and thin and we have more control uh, otherwise if you don't have one of these uh, pens you can use a really really fine brush but I find this to be quite a good tool to use so what we're going to do we're going to start off and we're going to be, I'll make sure it's dry, my canvas is dry, which is good. So really just imagine this fence being really rustic. And we're going to be drawing in the barbed wire. And it doesn't have to have a beginning or an end. It can also be quite loose and free. That's it. And to get the barbed wire, little spikes, you just do little V's. So we'll put one stroke there, one stroke there. Just every so often, wherever you feel as though you'd like to put a spike, you could put the spike. And you could just have one because it make it even more rustic and more weathered. And you can even do sort of a, a curl as well. If it's not coming out, just keep going over it. And that sort of gives sort of a curl on the barbed wire. A bit of the black. So really scratch it in. Make it as light as possible. Don't make it too heavy. Another little bit there. Yeah. If you like, if you're really good at drawing, especially birds, you're welcome to put like perhaps a little bird sitting on top of the, uh, the fence post. So I'll leave that one up to you. There we have it. So look how well that has come up just in this 40 minutes of painting this painting 
and uh, it's quite effective and see how the yellow canola has actually popped out of the canvas by seeing through the fence posts and the nice green foliage and you've got the moodiness of the sky and the pretty mountains in the background. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and good luck and have fun with it and I'll see you soon. Thank you.